So this is the question. Um, and it, uh, once you um, decode the question, once you figure out uh, what the question is saying, what information it's giving, then it, it, it is a relatively simple question. Um, but I want you to kind of uh, walk through the decoding of the language in the question. So it says, um, electric room heaters use a concave mirror to reflect infrared radiation from hot coils. Note that IR radiation follows the same law of reflection as visible light. Okay, good to know. The mirror has a radius of curvature. Let me just give you a symbol, R, and produces an image of coils Oh, uh, image, so this is my image distance away from the mirror. Okay, um, since it's talking about an image and a mirror, so let me try to draw a figure that I think represents this picture that's described in this question. So I have an object that's gonna be my, um, the electric coil, and this is my source of light. That's my object. It's uh, at some distance away from my curved concave mirror. So it's gonna be a converging mirror that looks something like this. And um, it, I, I'm given its radius of curvature. Um, so let me just uh, indicate something that has that information. And, um, and uh, to draw, um, um, so one information that's not given, but it is in fact what the question is asking, how far away are the coils from the mirror? And in that question, it's asking, what is my object distance? So let me label that. That's my object distance. And the information that the uh, question is given and I'm as I'm drawing this figure I'm making certain assumptions so I'm assuming that this setup produces a real image because I assume you want those infrared light to end up somewhere physically where we are going to be feeling the heat so um, I'm going to assume that there's a real image of that um, coil somewhere here and that's my image distance. So, so the, the light rays or the infrared light from this heating coil, it gets uh, focused by this uh, converging mirror and the focused image, if we could see infrared light, it would look something like this. And, uh, and that's the basic setup. So when you have that, I hope you recognize some things that you are given the uh, image distance. So, and you are asked about the object distance. So if you have a focal length, then that would go, um, that would go very far in helping you answer this question because it, um, there's this uh, relationship that in an optical setup involving um, in, the, in an image forming optical setup, whether it's lenses or mirrors, that uh, that relates to these three quantities uh, in this way. I usually call this a thin lens equation, and, and I guess I'm just going to call it that even when I'm dealing with the mirrors. The thin lens equation says one over object distance plus one over the image distance is equal to one over focal length. And this equation is applicable in a wide variety of situations with the correct understanding of focal length and the sign conventions on all these three quantities. So, which are all covered in lectures. So if you haven't seen it, take a look at it. <laughs> so what I need to know is the focal length. And this is where you hopefully remember from, from, remember from your reading, image formation by uh, uh, curved mirror, that there's a, with the curved mirrors, uh, there's a very simple relationship between focal length and the radius of curvature. The focal length of a, uh, a uh, um, focal length of a concave mirror of uh, radius of curvature r is given by r over two. 
So if I were to, in the scale I've drawn, if I were to draw the focal point, it should be somewhere here. And in your textbook in the lecture, we go through the derivation for uh, how come the focal point is at midway between the center of the, the spherical thing and the, uh, the vertex. So, but th this is an expression you kind of have to know from your reading <laughs> and, or at least to know uh, be um, guided enough from recognizing that this is going to be useful, um, look for some information on focal length. So, so we are given the radius of curvature. So from this, we can, uh, uh, we can calculate the focal length. This is 2F. So we can calculate the focal length there. So the rest of the question really boils down to let's solve this for object distance. So when you do uh, the, so um, <laughs> this time, let me go through algebra step by step. Um, so one over DO is equal to uh, one over F minus one over DI. I moved the one over DI over and I want, I'm going to want to take the reciprocal of both sides. So I need to combine these two. And the way to do that is put them with the set common denominator F times the DI. And in the process of putting them into common denominator, I'm multiplying this fraction by di, top and bottom. So I have image distance here. I'm multiplying this fraction, top and bottom, by f, focal length. So I have focal length f here, and it's being subtracted, minus. So I have this on the left-hand side, this on the right-hand side. Take the reciprocal of both sides. That gives you object distance is equal to F times di over uh, di minus F. And um, you hopefully want this object distance to be a positive because if it's negative in this simple setup, that means something's gone wrong. Um, so, um, so here in this fraction, the numerator is just positive because you are multiplying a positive number to, uh, so here F should be 24.5 centimeter, um, you know, multiplying positive number to positive number. So numerator is positive. And on the denominator, you can see that your image distance is greater than the focal length. So this should also be positive. So you will have a positive object distance. So it should be, object should be somewhere. Uh, hopefully so, some number that's a smaller than di. So, so yeah, work out the number here, keep it in centimeters and that's the answer here. Uh, I am not gonna do that since everyone here probably knows how to do that and me <laughs> fiddling the calculator is kind of waste of our time. Um, so, but I'm gonna assume that I have an answer to do from there. Uh, it asks, uh, part B asks, uh, what is the absolute value of the magnification of the heater element? Oh yeah, it's asking for the absolute value because um, when you work this, so, you know, there's a, um, your textbook does drive the, the formula for the linear magnification that, um, that magnification is given by minus di over do, and for the geometric argument leading to that, read the textbook or watch the lecture. <laughs> um, and here, I'm not really interested in this sign. In fact, I kind of drew this wrong. Um, if this arrangement is what I think it is, I should have an upside down coil here, not right side up. Um, and, you know, the question is asking for absolute value since we are not really all that interested in the fact that it's going to be upside down. So it's a, expecting a positive answer here. So you already have DI, you have DO from A, take their ratio and put that in here as a unitless quantity and the transfer. So this is a kind of the typical, um, simple but non-trivial uh, lens or mirror question. Um, it kind at some step, it involves applying this uh, a formula here. You are gonna see for this formula used a lot <laughs> in geometric optics. And, um, and sometimes there are some gaps you have to fill in. The question didn't give you the focal length directly, gave you the radius of curvature, relying on you to know this, to fill in that gap. So, 
So, uh, so I hope that's 